Hi guys, it's Alexa. Welcome to my channel. You may or may not know this, but I have a condition called autism. Autism is a spectrum disorder where you not only have trouble communicating and you may have trouble making friends as a result, but those on the autism spectrum also tend to have sensory issues. They may struggle to process senses such as lighting, noise, smell, so forth. And as a result, they may develop something like anxiety or frustration, or they may be hyperactive. A sensory room is a special place where those with autism, ADHD, anxiety, or whatever can go to calm down when they're frustrated, calm their senses, that kind of thing. I may be on the high end of the autism spectrum, but I need to admit that I do get both anxious and frustrated in a lot of situations. And, you know, I'm unhappy as a result. Not only that, but I oftentimes have trouble sleeping due to overstimuli like bright lights, loud volume on the TV, loud music, that kind of thing. That is why I decided to transform my bedroom into a bedroom slash sensory friendly area where the lights are dimmed down, where the volume on the TV is low and there are different items in the room that'll help me calm down when I'm anxious or frustrated. In this video, I'm going to show you my room transformation and hope it inspires you to build a sensory room or something in your house. Now, let's get into my sensory bedroom tour. So when you first enter the room, you can see that I dim down the lights to be sensory friendly. I got rid of my ceiling light because it was bright and it made the room overstimulating. As you can see, all I did was just unscrew the light bulbs from the ceiling light. And I also have a, some sensory lights in here. Here I have a fiber lamp. As you can see, it changes colors, which adds to the calming effect of the room. Although it's not ideal, this lamp kind of doubles as both a lamp and a sensory toy because, as you can see, it's also really fun to play with. It's not a plug-in lamp. You need batteries to work it. So if you get a fiber lamp, also make sure to get the batteries that it calls for. This is a really cool lamp and I really love it. It kind of reminds me of a palm tree, to be honest, the way the lamp looks. Here I have just a basic lava lamp. I love the calming effect of lava lamps, which is why I have one in my sensory room. Now, lava lamps take a while to heat up after you turn them on. Mine takes about two to three hours to heat up. So make sure to turn yours on ahead of time. Also, please, please, please be careful because lava lamps get very hot. Please be careful not to burn yourself. Please. I've also got this cool lamp over here. Don't worry, those are not real fish. They're fake plastic fish that look real. They're very cool. Anyways, this lamp is what's called a bubble tube. As you can see, it changes colors just like the fiber lamp. It also produces bubbles and has fake fish in it, as I already said. So it has kind of like a fish tank effect. The color change along with the bubbles give off a calming effect that is just so pretty. This is just a beautiful lamp. I love it so much. The only downside to bubble tubes is that they're expensive. I paid up to $100 for mine. Another thing to worry about is you have to fill the tube with water in order for it to work. And you have to worry about spills. The lamp potentially falling over and causing a flood. That kind of thing. The only thing I can say is, unless you can secure yours with a bracket or something, I did not. Please be careful and cautious around your bubble tube. And over here we've got my personal favorite, a light show projector. As you can see, it lights up the entire room with these really cool, beautiful lights that change colors and just give off a calming, mesmerizing effect. I mean, look at that. Isn't that the coolest thing you've ever seen? 
Something like this can double as both a sensory light and a party light too. So it's also great for parties. It also comes with a remote, although I never use the remote. I just don't need it personally. Besides sensory lighting, I also have this on my desk. This is an essential oil diffuser. It releases essential oils into the room, making the room smell good. Delicious smells like lavender, rosemary, vanilla, apple cinnamon. Anything that smells good can really help to calm a person down and relax them, especially if they struggle to process smells. I installed lavender essential oil into my diffuser because I personally love the way lavender smells. It smells amazing, and lavender in particular is very soothing. Similar to essential oil diffusers is scented candles, which are also really nice, but you have to light a scented candle for it to work. And I've never used matches or a lighter before, so I just want it to be safe. I don't want to burn the house down, you know? Moving on. So here I have a balance ball. I love to sit on this because it gives off sensory input. I love to sit on this when just using my laptop or watching TV. The balance ball really helps to improve your posture, your fine and gross motor skills, it helps prevent fidgeting, and it's just overall relaxing to sit on. Other ways you can use the balance ball are, you can bounce on it, which of course gives off calming sensory input, and it can help you get energy out when you're frustrated, hyperactive, or something similar. Another thing you can do that'll really give off sensory input and calm you down is lie on your stomach on top of the balance ball like this. You can do things that'll both give off sensory input and help with motor skills like walk on your hands. Balance balls also help with exercise, although I never use mine for that purpose. Right under my desk, I've got my bin full of sensory toys. Please let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to make a video showing my sensory toy collection. Anyways, I love having this bin right here under my desk because during those times where I need sensory input or I just want to fidget with something, I can easily grab whatever I want from this bin. This bin is easily accessible because it's right under my desk. In the bin, I have things like slime, putty, stress balls, kinetic sand, anything that's fun to fidget or play with. On my bed, I've got my weighted blanket. If you haven't seen my weighted blanket for autism video, I love weighted blankets because of the soothing pressure they put on your body. I just love having weight on top of myself when I sleep. It's so soothing and comforting can't believe it all started when Temple Grandin invented the squeeze machine. The only downside is, like the bubble tube, weighted blankets are expensive, but they're well worth the money, trust me. Next, we've got the punching bag. I love having a punching bag in my sensory room because it's great for those times where I'm upset or frustrated and... I feel the need to hit something. Whenever I'm upset or just need to get energy out, punching the punching bag really does help me calm down and feel better. It also kind of gives off sensory input and it's really fun to punch. The great thing about this punching bag is it's made of a material that won't hurt my hand. So I don't need any boxing gloves. I do need to weigh it down with my foot though or else it'll just fall over when I try to use it. It's fine. So yeah, if you need to take your anger out on something, I highly recommend a punching bag or some other object that's appropriate for hitting. And last but not least, we have my personal favorite, the indoor sensory swing. This is what's called a cuddle swing, but other indoor sensory swings you can buy are cocoon swings, platform swings, net swings, all different types of swings. I personally got a cuddle swing because I absolutely love the comforting pressure it puts on my body when I sit in it. Or back when I was in elementary school, my occupational therapist had a net swing and 
that was also a great swing that gave me sensory input. Not only is the cuddle swing comforting to sit in because of the way it hugs my body, but I also love the calming movements I get when I swing in it. Swinging is also a great way to get energy out. Now, I'll usually just sit in the swing and go back and forth in it while watching TV or something, but other ways you can use the swing are spin in it. Mine can't. I didn't exactly set it up where it could spin, but spinning is a very comforting form of movement. Just be careful not to get dizzy. Or you could lie down on your stomach in the swing. That's what my occupational therapist used to do with me when I was a kid. But just to be safe, I don't do it anymore. If anything, I just prefer to sit in the swing like normal. One thing I absolutely don't recommend doing is standing up in the swing because it's dangerous and you could break the swing. Also, if you can install your indoor swing into the ceiling, that's the number one recommended way to install it. But in my case, I have a swing stand. If that's the case for you too, one thing I definitely recommend doing is weighing it down on both sides with weights, like I did. I did about 50 pounds worth of weights on each side of the swing stand. I highly recommend doing this just so your swing stand doesn't fall over and potentially crash into something like the wall. Another thing I like to do is wear earplugs or noise-canceling headphones when it gets loud. I wasn't able to soundproof this room, so earplugs or noise-canceling headphones are the way to go for me, pretty much. I also like to keep the volume on the TV pretty low as a way to make the room sensory-friendly. Not so low where you can't hear anything, but also not loud enough to give you a headache, you know? And lastly, another thing I like to do is play calming music or sounds or even ASMR videos to help with the calming, relaxing vibe of the room. And that's pretty much it for my sensory room tour. I hope you liked it. So yeah, I decided to do this room transformation as a way to just be a happier person overall, to help me sleep better to help me calm down when I'm upset, to have a sensory friendly place to go in the house when there's a lot going on in the house, that kind of thing. I hope this video inspires you to build your own sensory room or just gives you ideas if you're an occupational or ABA therapist or if you have a sensory processing disorder, something along the lines of that. My sensory room has really helped me be a happier person, get my feelings under control, and I hope my ideas help you too if you use them. Anyways, if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you get notified every time I upload. You may also follow me on Twitter at Alexa underscore Gerard 98 and on Instagram at Alexa underscore Gerard. If you have any questions or requests for future videos, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!